Hello, internet person watching this video. I come to you to talk about um, old sets, and I kind of wish that I got to play them like um, people did back in the day, but I'm a tiny youngster who didn't have that privilege. However, Arena is granting me a chance at it. I drafted this set a few times, and I did really well. Oh, sorry. So, I think... Um, I'm just built different, but this is a way simpler set than like anything we've had. Like you all know that the amount of text that was printed like in the last year is like, what, 5%? I don't know the exact amount, but some crazy amount of text printed among all cards. Because the cards are so complicated. This is a rare. It has one, one ability. I haven't drafted wolves yet. Most of my decks were uh, Madness. Madness is really good. I also did white, red. Um, the aggressive play pattern of this draft is insane. Because the card's abilities aren't so complex, there aren't that many. Creatures themselves, power and toughness, those are abilities. Not legally, but power and toughness is I can punch you. So aggressive means something different in this style of play as it does today. You start to think about the points of damage differently. It's really fun, really interesting. Just get a Gophobia. I can splash it. It's not even that good of a card. I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be throwing my deck like this, but I think it's funny. Yeah, everything here is just like one or two abilities. And it's kind of, it's really refreshing actually. Oh, I see. So the werewolf transforms, instead of a human transforming into a werewolf, the werewolf transforms into something worse. There's like a there's like a secondary meaning behind that. Lunark Mantle, I wanted to talk about that one too. In my red-white deck, that was all about like attacking and just full swing, you don't even think about it. Really fun. But this card, it's awesome. It goes back to that thing where every point of damage matters. You think about magic in terms of cards. Like there's there's just there's play in the game. And then there's like there's a whole other world inside the, the theory of the game. And I find that world really interesting. Like for example, you probably you've probably felt this. One mana, one card, three image. And that is the farthest that they could possibly push it without it fundamentally breaking magic. Magic the Gathering relies on every card being worth one mana, every card being worth three life, in, and being worth a one one. Like That is just the basic conversion rate. So cards that exceed that, that's how you know like, oh, something interesting is happening, or they're trying something cool. Cards that go under that are just bad. Before now, it was okay to have a card in your deck that would give you a lesser rate for what you're paying, like the two mana draw two, discard two, the Jalem Tome. I don't know if that was ever played, but obviously not a good rate, like nowhere near. However, because it's repeatable, they decided that it made sense, and it it saw some amount of play, I'm sure. So the whole idea with one card being worth 3 damage is that you have 20 life. Technically speaking, you could bump it up to 21 and this would still make sense. You start with 7 cards, assuming all 7 cards are lightning bolts, which is not possible, <laughs> but assuming they were, then what you could do is cast all of them and deal perfect or just above perfect damage to kill your opponent, which is why the card is actually, in my opinion, Almost a perfect design. So, I don't care if I'm drafting my deck wrong, I'm not even worried about that right now. The idea of this rate is... I, I find it really interesting. If you were to bump your life up, like, I thought it was crazy that in Brawl you have 25 life. Some of, some of you who don't play Brawl because you don't go on Arena and Brawl's <laughs> not a thing outside like in paper you don't know what i mean but brawl is like standard except you have a commander and you have 25 life and that's something i think a lot of people miss and it's something that 
is um, very interesting to me because I wondered what that doesn't make any sense. It's it's the friendly format in this game. So I was like, okay, so it's just like friendlier to new players, I guess. They give you a free mulligan too. And it's only two players, it's not supposed to happen. But they do. Now now saying that, the twenty five life thing, I realize they're taking into account your commander. And they're taking your commander as four damage, which makes a lot of sense because it's gonna be a good card. And it's gonna be worth more than one mana. So probably. So the idea that you have twenty five life instead of twenty makes actually a lot of sense. Something else that I thought about, which is interesting, in the whole idea of um, card advantage, I think this is where card advantage comes from, everything that I've been saying. Because in white, you used to see card advantage inside the cards you play. You wouldn't see draw a card. They wouldn't do that. That goes against the color pie. But it made some semblance of sense. I mean, in draft, white is normally actually a really good color because small cards bring packages of card advantage they bring other cards in card advantage is something that isn't just on the board something that isn't just a loan to the card it is something that either impedes your opponent or progresses you in the game it, it deals with the game um and understanding that is, was kind of hard for me at at first but i think i'm ooh ramp ooh. I think I'm getting that. Ooh. Okay, no, we're <laughs> we're we're putting that. We're putting that. This relies on you having a board. This is not card advantage. This is just an effect. Um, but ooh, it relies on you having a board, and then it gives you something for having that board. That was generally, or or it gives you the board. It was basically two ways that White was able to aid you. It would never give you resources um, in the past, and recently they've changed that idea because Commander is a very, very resource-heavy game. It's, it's 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 a different game. So in the past, they were able to have cards that were. Um, I mean, these cards are interesting because they're all self-sufficient, but that was just commons back in the day. This card gives you a buff, and then it creates a, a it creates another card. It puts something onto your board. There are not many other cards in other colors that can do the same thing, but there's a lot of cards in white, and now there's a few cards in green too. But that whole idea, that was card advantage. That was wizards going, yeah, th that's what this color does. It's one mana, and this is the same rate as a lightning bolt. If you really think about it, it's one mana for a 1-1, one, one, and it gives you a buff on top of that. So it's actually technically better. <laughs> I don't want to say that this card is better than a lightning bolt, but um, game theory-wise, it is. The clause that they put on it to make it, to set it back, was if you control an equipment, and that was very smart for a gameplay standpoint. Um, because then every white deck in the draft format would use it. But it's interesting to think of, of how colors change um, and the game changes over time because of the way that we think about these cards, the way that we used to think about these cards. Like creatures, I was talking about how power and toughness are abilities. They were considered that in the old days, not like legally again, but... In card design, and the old days, I mean like 10 years ago or more, they were purposefully putting downsides on creatures at the same rate that they were supposed to be nowadays, like 3 mana, 2, 4. Instead of saying, whenever you sacrifice a clue, you gain through your life, it would say, um, pay an upkeep cost. I'm sure a lot of you know this, but I don't know if you know the reasoning. It's because comparatively to instants and sorceries which don't do anything after you cast them these cards look so powerful these cards win you the game you can't let them do more than that otherwise people will only ever play creatures why would you play a sorcery that could deal two damage to a creature when you could play a creature for a similar cost that could deal two damage 
and then kill your opponent. But they made the creatures really, really bad. Like, really bad. And they made the instants and sorceries really, really good. Um, and they had to back themselves out of that. Yeah. We'll play around with the deck. It's always good to get to give yourself feedback when playing a deck. I had a I have a friend who always talks about the theory of magic, which is what I love about him. And he was talking about like this book that a guy wrote, like the the art of beatdown. It's a famous magic book, actually. And it was in that era, that like golden era of we're figuring out how this game works in like the inner workings. Understanding when you're on the aggressive and when you're on the defensive. And that's that that's magic. New players have a really hard time with that. You'll see a lot of new players playing red decks. And they don't attack. And you say, Hey, I have a creature and I wouldn't block. Maybe you should consider attacking. And then they go, Oh, okay. And they're kinda uncomfortable and then they attack you and you take the damage and they're like, Okay, I guess you took some damage. And you feel like they learned a little bit. But they're still scared to attack because, oh no, they just took one damage and they're going down to 19. What they don't realize is that your hand looks a lot worse to them than their hand does. Because you're at 17 life and they're at 19 life. Your hand at 17 life looks a lot worse than their hand, even with a tapped creature. I should probably tap before my opponent starts spamming me. Gotta keep the beat down. Gosh darn it. Hmm. The wording on this makes it really slow. It has to happen on your upkeep. You only get to win the game the next turn if you reduce your opponent's life total to 13 via its ability. So right now, I would never use this card on this creature because even though we're at the same life total, I want my opponent to die and they want to stay alive. They don't want to kill me. If they kill me, that's great, but they're not going to. That's just not how this game works. So I'm going to attack and bait a uh, no block. Yep. This is just a 3-4. I can take 3 damage. Because that 2-2 two, two body, if I had killed it, I waste a card, I waste a 3 damage. My opponent loses a card, but it was tapped. So what do I benefit from it? My life total is completely irrelevant right now because I'm on the beatdown by opponents defending, which makes that attack look pretty bad if they can't follow it up with a creature. <laughs> I don't know how they achieved this rank. I mean, I guess they're holding up um, mana for something, so I could just swing in. Oh, forgot that card is a thing. It's a good piece of mana. Okay. So it looks like they're about to flip the, the switch. And now... Are they on the... Okay, they're not on the attack just yet. They're not ready. I watched a video from the professor on mulliganing, and I mean most of this stuff is, it's pretty basic, but like, it's basically saying, think, think about it. Can your hand, can your next hand beat this hand? Will it? And if it will, then why would you not mulligan? You're only losing one card. However, if you plan to be on the beatdown, that one card is that three damage that you need to kill your opponent. Of course, when I say lightning bolt, I don't mean exactly that card is a lightning bolt. It can't be. But, because you can't have seven lightning bolts in your deck. But, it's a, it's not even a metaphor. It's a comparative to the idea that those hands reach you towards that total of 20 or in Lightning Bolt case 21. Uh, this is a really weird block because it's preventing two Okay, there it is. I wasn't reading my cards. 
So, yeah, I'm just going to do that. I was reading that guys. Like, I wouldn't mulligan unless I had a really crappy hand because that one card is that uh, three or two damage that I need to bring my opponent's life total down. Without that one card, my opponent can actually just take the damage, wait until they have a chance to strike, and then use that chance to kill me. That's the control, that's the flip. You flip from being the defender to being the aggressor. The reason I just won this game is because my opponent never became the aggressor. You can have control as an aggro deck. That's that's actually the idea of aggro. It's not it isn't just blind attacking. No matter how fun that is, but you can control the control deck. In, in fact, that is how you win. Because it, because it, on my upkeep, my opponent would have went to zero life exactly, and just like I had the retail, I had the extra space in my hand to do that, which also lets me know that I'm able to take a mulligan. I have some amount of leeway. I ended the game with um, possibly three cards in my hand. I think I wouldn't mulligan down to four cards because of that. But theoretically, with a perfect four and perfect draws, I wouldn't have a hard time with them. Also, this hand is whoo! Something special. We're both trying to figure out what's going on right now. Because it's the same deck. So, there's going to be a lot of push and pull. If one of us is a very, very good player, then it would be easy to find who's pushing at this point. But we're not. We're gonna make mistakes. Like attacking. That was probably... If I end up winning this game, that attack was a bad move. If they end up winning that game, this game, that attack was a good one. It's hard to tell these things. Wow. I've seen this play. You have something, but I, I don't care. Because <laughs> I have another arsonist. Oh, I just wasted your turn. One of the best feelings. Oh, look. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm taking it. But I'm going to kill that Ulrich. You, you better. So that never gets to transform because it dies. Oh yeah. I, I could just die right now. Yay. He's all... Oh no. <laughs> this is the end. No! What a way to go. A burn down the house style effect. Wow, that's a prime example of power creep. Burn down the house, one mana less, and the devils have. It's only three devils, but they have haste. You can also use it as a wrath. Ah. Yeah. I hope you learned something. Anything.